All right, thanks for watching and continuing our multivariable extravaganza. Today I will show you how to calculate the surface area of any surface. Any surface, you might say? Yes, any surface. And indeed, let me illustrate this by finding the surface area of a sphere or radius tube. Surface area of sphere of radius two. And it gets messy, but everything simplifies beautifully. That's why I want to do this example. And by the way, there's another video I've done which does it in n dimensions for any dimensions. But here, the nice thing is very concrete, so no abstract machinery. So let's just draw a quick picture. So here's a beautiful sphere, x, y, z. The important thing is it has radius two. Okay, and what's the most important thing, as I said in vector calculus, it's you want to parameterize so in other words, you want to express this sphere in terms of two variable. And well, who says sphere says spherical coordinates. So in other words, let's parameterize this with theta and phi, where theta is the horizontal motion. It goes like that. And phi is the vertical motion, like German vertical and that's why let's parameterize that. So r theta phi, you can just use the equations of spherical coordinates where the radius is two. So this becomes two sine phi cosine theta. So think r cosine theta and then r sine theta. And to z, to cosine phi. Not sure what to say about that. But by the way, if you want me to derive those equations, I'll be happy to do that in another video. But this video is long enough, so let's keep it short. Says the guy who does one hour long videos. But anyway, and now I will tell you how to do it. So I mean, I will tell you how to do it, and then I'll explain you why we get that. So it turns out the process is almost the same as um, finding equations of tangent planes, but it's a little miracle. But I will tell you later why this is true. So just as before, what we want to do, we want to calculate the derivatives of r with respect to theta and with respect to phi. So we get minus 2 sine phi sine theta. 2 sine phi cosine theta and luckily the last part is 0 and r phi which is uh, 2 cosine phi cosine theta 2 cosine phi sine theta minus 2 sine phi I need to make sure there's no sign mistake, because otherwise it gets very messy. Uh, yep, it looks good. Okay. The next thing is, just as before, again, surprisingly, you have to cross those two vectors. So like this evil biologist who crosses things. R theta cross R phi. That becomes, so, minus 2 sine phi sine theta. And it gets messy. Be careful. So 2 sine phi cosine theta 0. 2 cosine phi cosine theta 2 cosine phi sine theta minus 2 sine phi and ijk. 
What a terrible, terrible thing. But again, we're not scared. We're mathematicians. Hopefully, hopefully math people are watching this. Um, and you calculate that. So this determinant, boom, becomes minus two sine squared phi cosine theta. So minus four, sorry. Minus four sine squared phi cosine theta. The next step, j. Minus, so four sine squared phi sine theta. But this minus sign because of this minus. So minus four sine squared phi sine theta. And lastly, the most awful of them all, minus four cosine phi sine phi sine squared theta. Sine squared theta. And then minus that, minus four sine phi cosine phi cosine squared theta. And again, you've seen a second why. I think this problem is beautiful. Because bam, we have our first simplification. Sine squared plus so cosine squared equals to one. So you just end up with minus four cosine phi sine phi. Minus four sine squared phi cosine theta. Minus four sine squared phi sine of theta and minus four cosine phi sine phi. Okay, that's first one. Now you have well, this normal vector, well, let's call it r theta r times r phi. The next thing is we want to take this vector and calculate its length. And let's call that ds. And you'll see why. ds is the length of r theta cross r phi. How do you find the length of this vector? You take square root of the sum of squares of the components. So 16 sine fourth of phi cosine squared theta plus 16 sine to the fourth phi sine squared of theta plus 16 cosine squared phi sine squared phi to the square root. Good. No, I forgot. It shouldn't be a theta. I want to be super excited and delete that. But OK. Now, here comes a second beautiful thing. Cosine squared plus sine squared Again, there's a simplification. And you're left with 16 sine to the fourth phi plus 16 cosine squared phi sine squared phi to the one half. And notice indeed, there is a common factor here. Namely, those two terms have 16 sine squared phi in common. So let's just factor it out. So 16 sine squared phi, square root. And what you're left with is, lo and behold, sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi to the one half. And there we go. We have our third simplification. And if you cancel that, you get four sine phi. It's supposed to be absolute value, but in a second I explain why we can erase that. So you see, we started with this horrible, horrible vector, okay, where we did have one simplification, and it turns out if you calculate the length of it, it's actually very easy. It's just four sine feet. Okay. Why is that important? What is the area of S? 
So what is the surface area of this sphere? There's an easy way to remember this. It's just a double integral of this junk that you just found. So double integral of ds. And now I forgot to write the bounds, but now we can do this. x, y, z. Well, theta is a horizontal angle. It's between 0 and 2 pi. Phi, which is the vertical angle, is just between 0 and pi. And the reason is, if you go above that, you have some redundancies happening. So, so the easiest way to write this is phi between 0 and pi. And that's why we get rid of the absolute value. Because if uh, the angle is between 0 and pi, then the sign is positive. That's why we have that. OK, and now we put your, our bounds. So ds is 4 sine phi. And now our two variables are like du dv, which are d theta d phi. Theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Phi is between 0 and pi. This integral doesn't depend on theta at all. So it's 2 pi minus 0. So it's 2 pi times the integral from 0 to pi of 4 sine phi d phi. An antiderivative is minus 4 cosine phi from 0 to pi. And that just becomes 2 pi times minus 4 times minus 1, which is 4 plus 4 times 1, which is 4. So you end up getting uh, 8 times 2 pi, which is 16 pi, which indeed is 4 pi times 2 squared. And if you do it with another angle, you know, with another radius, in general, you would find that the air surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared by using the exact same method. Ta-da! So I know it's very messy and there are easier surface area problems, but uh, I think this is beautiful because it starts out with a very complicated problem, but there's so many simplifications that you end up just having this. Lastly, why is, does that work? Well, suppose you have a surface, S. And what you want to do, you want to calculate the surface area. The idea is, this is very complicated, but let's approximate it with an easier problem. Namely, instead of calculating the surface area, let's just tile the surface with little parallelograms that are determined by the tangent plane. And each parallelogram, the surface area of the parallelogram becomes ds. And the idea is, um, to get the surface area of s, you just sum up those little areas of parallelograms. So area of the surface is just the double integral of ds, where ds is little parallelograms, parallelogram. How do we find that parallelogram? It's determined by the tangent plane. In other words, Remember what I told you about tangent planes. Suppose you have a surface, again like that, and you have a point R U V. Then there 
are two vectors that are for sure in the tangent plane. Namely, are you and are we? So of course, the first idea is simply to take the parallelogram to be just the parallelogram determined by R U and R V. But that would be a very stupid idea because in general the parallelogram is gigantic. So instead of doing that, you just consider a smaller one. You s multiply R U by a small number. Let's call it D U. R U and R V by another small number. This is what's called scaling. You scale it with a small number, and then you get a smaller parallelogram, and this one we call, we, we call it ds. So ds is really a little patch, little parallelogram, and then you add up those little patches. Now, the question is, what is ds? Well, ds is just the area of this little parallelogram. And remember, to find the area of a parallelogram with two sides, you just take the length of the cross product. So the first length is duru. The second length is dvrv. Those are just numbers. So think positive numbers, so they come out. And you have RU cross RV, DU, DV. So DS is just length of RU cross RV times DU, DV. But I left that out to make it easier to remember. And then the area of S then just becomes double integral of DS. And that's double integral of RU cross RV du dv. And that's exactly what we did, except we call this r theta called cross r phi d theta d phi. And that's how you get it. And it allows us really to calculate the surface area of any surface. So how cool is that? And we'll move on because uh, we will then calculate surface integrals next time, which is essentially the same idea. All right, I hope you liked it. And if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.